Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. No Effort November is almost over, but I have time for one more, or if we're lucky, maybe two more videos before the month is out. In this video, I'm going to talk about two secret flags to make your tests a heck of a lot better in Go. What are the two flags? Well, the first one is the race flag. Formula One goes racing on the streets of Las Vegas. And the second one is the shuffle flag. What's so great about these flags? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's what I'm here to tell you about. Now, before I talk about these two special flags, let's just make sure we have a baseline understanding of what I mean by test. Now, I hope you're familiar with this command, go test, usually followed by dot slash dot dot dot, which means to run all the tests in your current directory uh, recursively. Hopefully you have tests to be running, uh, and th this will run them for you and make sure that your code does what you expect. So I've written a really simple package here to demonstrate today, and it is working perfectly. Thank you, tests, for proving that to me. So let's talk about the race flag. They're off. If you add minus race to your command line like this, you turn on what's called the race detector. Let me show you what happens when you run that. Oh. Oh. What just happened to my beautiful tests? Well, it turns out, even though my tests are passing, they contain an insidious little bug called a data race. And when I add that race flag to my command line, it instructs the test to crash in case of a data race. Let's look now at the code of this program and we'll see where that data race exists. So this is a very simple program that you would never write like this. I wrote it intentionally, of course, to cause a data race. Um, I'm essentially launching a number of Go routines and all of these Go routines uh, update the same counter this uh, global variable called total, and they do that without locking it as a data race. I have multiple Go routines that are updating a variable uh, without protecting it. And so that's what a data race is. So the solution would be uh, at minimum to add a, a mutex or some other protection around that global variable that is being uh, accessed in multiple Go routines simultaneously. So that's the first flag. Now let's talk about shuffle. <laughs> Let's see what that one does. Ooh, that's also embarrassing. So what does this one do? Well, the shuffle flag, specifically go test minus shuffle equals on, tells the test suite to shuffle the order of the tests. So what this failure is telling me is that the tests I've written are order dependent. That means if they run out of order, or if I skip one, or if later on I insert one, they're gonna start failing. So that's a bad characteristic of tests. Your tests should be independent of each other. Let's look at the tests I've written and let's see if we can see why this is a problem. So I have a number of test cases here. And if we start at the top, uh, it looks innocent enough. It tests that the counter is zero. The second one adds uh, a blank input and checks that the counter is zero. The third one uh, adds a single input and checks that the counter is zero. The, the key here is that all of these are updating a global variable. And further, they aren't actually resetting it. Some of the later tests reset it. Uh, so this, t this test here resets the counter to zero before it starts incrementing it, uh, but these don't. So if any of these three tests run after any of the following tests, they will fail because that counter's initial state is not zero as they expect. So one solution to this problem would be to set total equals zero for each of these tests. Now the shuffle mode no longer detects failure because the tests are no longer order dependent. Now, it's still very poorly designed code. Please don't write your code like this. I intentionally wrote uh, buggy, poorly designed code to demonstrate these two features. But there you have it. Those are the two flags I wanted to mention today. Go minus race and go minus shuffle equals on. And of course you can use them together. And in fact, you probably should use them together on all of your test runs. Uh, add that to your CI config today if you're not already doing it. Well, I think that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new here, I hope you hit subscribe, and if you learned something, hit the like button. Uh, now I'm going to go uh, fix some races in my code, and I hope to see you in my next video. Until then. <laughs>